Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. How are you people and can you hear me? Waalaikumsalam. <coughs> yes, ma'am. That's great. So, today we're going to start with another part of uh, different types of diseases affecting the skin. That is going to be infestations. So, uh, at the end of this lecture, I hope that and believe that the students will be able to diagnose a case of scabies and lice infestation. Now, anybody who can tell me what is the difference between uh, infestation and infection? I hope you can recall the definition of infection. Yes, anybody. Difference between infection and infestation. <clears throat> I'm waiting. Can you hear me all? And can you see me? All right. So, Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. Good that I can. Ma'am, uh, infestation is the presence of uh, uh, any parasite in the body. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, entry of any parasite in the body and infection when that parasite multiplies and causes the disease. That is infection. Okay. So just the entry of a parasite is enough uh, to cause an infestation. For example, if a virus enters the body, is it an infestation until it starts multiplying? That's what you mean. Madam, I think uh, um, this is only, uh, you know, limited to parasites, not viruses or bacteria. And uh, viruses and bacteria are not parasites. So what is the definition of a parasite then? Um, madam, a living organism and parasites are uh, not microorganisms, I think. Okay, okay. Good idea. Ma'am, I think that the arthropods and worms, when they parasitically depend upon a host, then it is called infestation. And uh, when viruses, fungi, and bacteria, these organisms are attacking a host, then it is called infection. Very good. Infestation, Very good. specifically, I will like to consider it with arthropods and worms only. Yes, exactly. If you've got a mobile in your hand and you Google it uh, quickly, then you get such an answer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Google it, yeah. <laughs> Still, I'm impressed. Well, I was really intrigued by the question. That's why I Googled it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, dear. It's uh, good, at least. You were just uh, sort of stimulated, and that's what I wanted. Yes, uh, yeah. Infection, as I told you, that this is invasion of a vascularized yeah. tissue, not a dead tissue, a vascularized living tissue by different microorganisms that entry into the bloodstream, and finally, multiplication. And then they reach their specific organ and start their mechanism of action and this and that and so on. So that is an infection. There isn't much difference between infection and infestation because those my viruses and microorganisms are also parasites because they are dependent on the living organism for their living. So infestation, it's just an arbitrary definition that is uh, mostly uh, uh, limited to the, as you said, arthropods and worms. And in that case also, there is entry. So we further divide, uh, divide it into two parts. There is acto uh, parasites and endoparasites and things like that. In this, 
we can roughly say that the organism is on the surface or in the body and not actually in the bloodstream. All right. So if difference, uh, I hope you try to get what I uh, meant by it. So it's uh, infestation that is by different or my arthropods and worms. Okay. So again, in that we have endoparasites and ectoparasites, endo and ecto as you can uh, see or perceive from the words, ecto means outside, that is it's present outside on the surface and endoparasitization is that is when it actually invades the body that may be the cavities, that may be different organs, which you will study later on in medicine as well. So today we're going to discuss two of such ectoparasitic infestations. One of them is scabies. You must have heard about scabies. So uh, it's a very common disease and it's presenting throughout the year, 365 days a uh, year and throughout, uh, it, there isn't any seasonal variation or much difference causing by seasonal changes. And it's uh, very, you can say, almost endemic in our area at least. So it's an ectoparasitic infestation. Ecto means outside, parasite as the name suggests, an infestation present on the surface of the body that is caused in humans. That means that it is also caused in some animals as well, but today we're going to discuss only those causing infestation in humans. And the mite responsible is known as Sarcoptes scabii variety hominis. That is, this variety is affecting the human beings. So the name is Sarcoptes scabii hominis. Then, what are the different uh, types of uh, microorganisms or these uh, parasites that can affect? not moving, the slide is not moving. Let me check. Yes. So this is briefly the structure. Right. So uh, this might the structure you can see roughly. You're not uh, required to uh, remember the parts actually but this is an interesting structure which you can see when you scrape a skin, part of the skin on an infest, infected person, person having scabies. And this is what you see under the microscope. And actually it's moving its limbs as well and looks quite horrible under the microscope. It affects people of all social, economic and ethnic categories. Any age can be affected, but mostly elderly, then children and young adults. Those uh, uh, are usually affected or contracted by close physical contact, such as prolonged hand holding. It may be because of overcrowding and even by sexual contact. And it affects both the genders equally. Then again, this is Sarcoptis KPI. It's a larger view. And it's barely visible to human eye. The male is about half the size of that of female. And it's a creamy white, small structure, which has four pairs of legs. And the interesting thing, which we'll discuss later as well, that it can only survive for 24 to 36 hours away from the host body. That is, it cannot survive without a host, actually. Then this is briefly its life cycle. And here you can see different areas of the body that are mostly affected by these mites. And many of the areas, they are uh, spared. Those areas that are like having more sebaceous glands activity, they are actually spared. 
So about its life cycle briefly, I think you must have uh, learned it in uh, parasitology. It has four stages like any other arthropod, that is the egg, larva, nymph, and finally the adult. And every day in a female adult lays about two to three eggs. And these uh, eggs, when they hatch in about three to four days, the larvae migrate to the skin surface and then they burrow into the intact stretching corneum. This is outer most layer of the epidermis, <clears throat> excuse me. And through that, they will reach and uh, burrow up to the stratum granulosum only. And here, they construct the molting pouches in which the larva is going to stay for about, again, three to four days. Out of, uh, after that, a uh, larva comes out. And the larva has only three pairs of legs, then we have nymphs, which have four pairs of legs, which molt into larger nymphs before molting into adders. So this is a stage finally, that is an egg, larva, nymph, a larger nymph, and then an adult. <clears throat> this is on histology. If you will ever do a biopsy, you're going to see this sarcoptis KPI, and this is not deeper than the stratum granulosum. That is the third layer of outermost epidermis in the skin. Some interesting facts about uh, scabies that normally, normally if a person is normal with good immunity and good hygiene, and if it only gets scabies, the average number of mites in a patient is only about 10 to 12. An incubation period for this disease is up to four weeks in first episode and few days in subsequent infestation. That is if at all he gets infected for the first time, it takes about four weeks till when he gets the symptoms or presents to you. So what could be the reason that when the subsequent infestations, it's earlier? Yes, anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it is related to immunity somehow. That is the person that gets sensitized. As you must have uh, learned from your physiology that whenever there is sensitization and upon exposure to the same thing subsequently, the patient or the person or the body is going to respond more uh, quickly. This is because of the memory cells present in the body. So in case of first uh, episode, it's going to present after about four weeks and few days in subsequent infestations because the body is already sensitized and is having memory T cells for that. So every lifespan of each adult is about four to six weeks. And in that uh, duration plays about 30 to 40 eggs. And burrowing speed is about two to three millimeter per day. Two to three millimeter per day. So this is uh, some uh, in fa uh, facts about the scabies. Then again, it is attracted to the warmer areas such as the skin folds where clothings are tied, like the interdigital spaces of the hands, this uh, capital fossa, the elbows, the wrists, the buttocks, the belt line, nipples, and the genitalia. These are typical areas that are involved by scabies. How do they uh, present to you in the OPD? They're going to tell you that I'm having burst itching. It's very bad and it's almost all over the body. And uh, it gets even worse at night or when the patient is warm, that is the patient is in bed. It's uh, usually sparing the face in case of adults, but in case of children, very small infants especially, it's going to affect the face as well as the scalp. And onset is about three to four weeks after infection is acquired. But also, typically, if you ask them, there is going to be a positive history of affected persons in the household. So three symptoms you remember, person is having itching, which is worse at night, a 
present or, or those typical areas that we just discussed, that is the warmer areas, and especially when patient goes to bed, it starts and it gets even worse, and there is history of affected persons in the household. The typical lesion of uh, scabies infestation is a burrow, that is a tortuous lesions, and they appear as slightly raised, brownish, tortuous uh, tracks, actually. These are called uh, burrows, and these are produced by the mites when they actually dig into the stratum, uh, through the stratum forming into the epidermis, and they form molds over there. What types of lesions can you see? Spectrum of rash. Uh, again, you will have primary lesions, that is the lesions caused by the mite, actually it's by its, um, the mite itself, that is the burrows. Then there may be secondary lesions. As I told you, there is immunity coming into play, immunity against the mite itself or its eggs or even the fecal matter that is produced in the burrow. And that is going to take some time when immunity comes into play and the results can be seen in after about three to four weeks. And uh, because of that reaction, the person feels this itching. And as a result of itching, they might produce papules and even some cases nodules can be present. So the primary lesion is a burrow. The secondary lesion, secondary to sensitization, there may be papules and nodules, a lesion secondary to scratching. Now the person starts having itching, the feeling of itching and starts scratching. That scratching may lead to excoriation marks, that is denuded skin because of itching with nails. There may be secondary eczematization, again, because of sensitization as well as scratching, there may be uh, scaling or uh, skin that is found to be uh, torn off. And if at all, there may be secondary uh, bacterial infection, then you can see signs of impetigo or there may be pustule formation and so on. And the most severe form of this rash could be that is present in Norwegian scabies, that is a separate entity, the most severe form, you can see even crusted lesions. So you can see burrows, you can see papules, nodules, you can see par signs of scratching that may lead to excoriations, even eczematization, that may be secondary bacterial infection in the form of papules, pustules, and impetigo that we learned in uh, bacterial infections. And finally, there may be crusted lesions in the most severe form. Now I'll show you the pictures one by one. Here you can see, this is a typical burrow, right? Then you can have papules, signs. Uh, papules uh, can be seen here. This is a type that is typical on the wrist. Then on the side of the foot, again, you can see a tortuous lesion, raised brownish lesion. This is a burrow, a typical burrow. The interdigital web space, another the typical site here, you can see a burrow, raised brownish skin colored burrow. Then on the side of palm, these hands, the wrists, see, here you can see, this is a burrow. Are you with me? Then on uh, another lesion, this is present on the anterior axillary wall, if you can see over here. Here you can see papules, right? Papules in the axilla, papules in the interdigital web spaces, in addition to the burrows. Now these are secondary lesions, these are papules papules in a generalized rash all over the abdomen, typical sites again. <clears throat> now in case of children, as I told you, and in, uh, especially in infants, lesions because the skin is very soft, so they can also appear on the soles. In case of adults, the soles are quite hard and the scabies you know, might not be able to invade or dig a burrow, but in case of children, and since they are almost, uh, the interest of infants, they are almost all of the time on the bed. So these uh, softer parts, softer soles can also be affected. And palms, they can be affected even in adults. Here you can see nodules, again in the axilla. Here, eczematization, secondary lesions, secondary to 
fracture. You can see scaling and involvement of in intervening skin as well, in addition to the papules. Secondary bacterial infection, impetigenization is seen in the form of pus and then crusting that is seen in impetigo on a palm of a patient. Now, this is a case of Norwegian scabies. And here you can see crusted plaques that are present on the dorsal of the hands. This is uh, the most severe part spectrum, spectrum of the disease. And this is a disease in which actually millions of mites are present in the body. This can be seen in immunocompromised, in those who are hemiplegic, that is, they cannot move, in those who cannot scratch their certain conditions in skin, in patients who do not have nails, they cannot actually scratch them off. And in mentally retarded old homes, such cases, neglected cases, when they grow to become uh, millions, actually, then they can present in this case with crusted lesions. So how do we diagnose? Again, as the, uh, it's just a typical story, as a, just a spectrum of presentation, the patient is going to tell you with, uh, that he's having generalized itching with nocturnal exacerbation. He's going to tell you, Dr. Sahab, I'm having itching all over the body. body. It's really bad, but it gets even worse at night when I try to go to sleep or get into bed. And if you ask, are there any other people back in the family? And then he's going to give you a positive history of contacts in the household. Now you're going to look for typical lesions. You might or might not see these burrs actually, but if you're vigilant enough, you can look for them in these typical areas. That is the wrist, the interdistal web spaces, the, uh, in, in the cubital fossa, in, in the abdomen, axillary, and typically you have to look for them in case of uh, even kidney. Sorry. In case of ad, even adults or children, you can look for them. You can look for these lesions in case. Look for these typical lesions on the abdomen, in case of females on the breast, and in males adults or children, you can see these lesions on the genitalia. So very typical history, itching, which is worse at night. There is present uh, positive history of contacts in the household, and you can see typical lesions. Final diagnosis, if at all, it's still you're not sure, you have to go for a microscopic identification. That is the only way to make a definitive diagnosis, which requires the identification of mite itself, presence of eggs or even the fecal matter. You have to take scrapings from burrows using a sterile scalpel and you just drop them these, uh, uh, these scrapings onto a slide and put a drop of mineral oil and then do it under the microscope. And you can see, if you're lucky, you can see this uh, mite, eggs or even uh, the fecal matter. Right. So on the basis of history, then you can go for microscopic identification or you can go for dermoscopy. There's an instrument dermoscope, which magnifies actually the lesions that are present in the outer layers of the skin. You can also go for adhesive tape test. That is, you apply an adhesive tape or over lesions and suspected lesions and you just pull it back and then view it under the microscope. You might get any part or eggs or anything of the mind. And finally, definitive diagnosis, if still you're not sure, you can go for a skin biopsy, which we hardly go for because the clinical presentation is so typical with a very good history and typical lesions present in the abdomen, genitalia, and these web spaces that you can always be sure and start treatment. So how do you treat actually? Again, I always divide the treatment into four parts. That is general treatment, then symptomatic treatment, specific treatment, and finally, treat any complications if present. 
in the general treatment, remember, you have to treat all of the members in the household. Patient is going to trust why I'm having the symptoms, but nobody else would say you're going to tell him that you have to treat all of the household members, even if they are not having any itching or specific lesions. Because as I told you, that it is spread with close contact, it might take three to four weeks to actually present with symptoms. So you have to treat all the household members at the same time in order to get rid of the mite for good. Otherwise, just you're going to have weekly visits by different members of the household and as and when they start getting the symptoms. So number one, you have to treat all members of the family at the same time, even those who are not having any symptoms of lesions. Then you have to treat the linen as well, the patient's clothing, beddings, anything that is being used that may be linen, towel, quilt, quilt cover, bed or pillow cover or anything like that. It should be washed with hot water or it must be kept in a plastic bag for about 72 hours. Why? Why is that? If you can wash, why would you keep it in a plastic bag for about 72 hours? Anybody? Of course it will die, but why will it die? Why don't you find in them and kill each of them separately? Why would you put them in a plastic bag? Yes, of course, not to contact others. Yes, good idea. It cannot live away from the host for more than 24 to 36 hours. So if at all, because of the weather conditions or because of lack of water, or if you cannot wash all of these linen together, at least you can put them in a plastic bag and then get it treated by sun after that time so as to get rid of the mite. Yes, good. So you have to treat the person, the household family members, all of them, then you have to treat all of the linen. If you can wash it with hot water, it's good. But if you cannot, then you put it away from the body of the hose for more than 72 hours in a plastic bag or so and treat it afterwards with sun. And during this treatment plan or this treatment process, the patient should be advised to avoid close physical contact until they and their household members and sexual partners have all been treated. Then for symptomatic treatment, of course, there is itching. You have to give antihistamines. And if there is eczematization, then you can give topical emollients. And sometimes we give them diluted steroids. That is steroid added to a larger part of uh, emollient for a few days. And that is going to help with the eczema. Then what is the specific treatment? You have to give anti -stepatic. That may be topical or oral. Among the topical, we have used to give them different uh, um, concentrations of sulfur, five to 10% benzyl benzoate, gamma benzene or lintain, monosulfuram, crotamiton, melathion. But the one thing that you must remember, it's 5% per methrin. 5% per methrin in cream or lotion form. This is a very good treatment that is non-toxic, that is not having any side effects and it can safely be given even to kids, lactating and pregnant females. So the method is that you apply this 5% per methrin lotion or cream at night. At night, why do we apply this uh, thing to at night when it's cumbersome? Why not during the day? Yes, good idea. It has more time to act. Yes, the mite comes out during the night when there is warmth. Yes, again. So you people are awake. Yes, it's a good idea that the mite sometimes come out, but uh, also the symptoms are worse at night and there is also a longer period for contact. So we advise the patient to take warm uh, to be, take bath with warm water, dry it and apply it all over the body below the scalp that is starting from the neck down to toes, especially in the web spaces, axillae, genitalia in the body folds all over 
all of the household members they should apply it. Let it stay for about 10 to 12 to 14 hours and take a bath next day in the morning. Change his or clothes and wash them. Put them in the sun, dry there, and then iron it on the wrong side of the uh, clothes so that if at all any mites are present, they will be killed by heat. And those linen and bedding and towels and quilts and everything else, blankets that cannot be washed with hot water should be put in sun in a plastic bag for about 72 hours. And this process will be repeated exactly after one week. That is on day one and day eight, we are going to apply topical permethrin. At night, it's going to stay for about 10 to 12 hours and then washed away and then another bath taken. So uh, this is the topical uh, treatment of choice nowadays. And also another treatment that is oral treatment is available that is ivermectin that can be given to, uh, that can be given to adults and uh, it should be avoided in pregnant and lactating females and also children below five especially because it's neurotoxic. So it should not be given to children who are not, uh, uh, CNS is not developed. It should not be given to pregnant or lactating mothers as it is secreted in the breast milk. So this is the specific treatment. And you should also treat if there are any complications like treatment of secondary infections and any other that is eczematization or any other sensitization. In case of uh, Norwegian scabies, you have to treat the patient as a whole, take good care of the patient, and also apply this topical as well as oral. So in case of Norwegian scabies, you have to give both treatments. Otherwise, we have a choice. We can give oral or to uh, topical. But in case of Norwegian scabies, you have to give both. So I hope. You got it. A patient comes with a history of itching all over the body, which is worse at night, and there is present of first day history in the household contacts. So you're going to look for typical lesions at typical sites in the body and go for the treatment. I hope if a patient of scabies comes across you, you are going to at least identify it and maybe treat as well if you learned well <clears throat> and or maybe you can simply refer him to the skin of it. Is that fine with you? <clears throat> All right. Next, we move on to the next infestation that is known as pediculosis. In simple words, it's infestation by lice. Lice is plural and the singular is louse. So presence of lice known as pediculosis or Prithra Terra. So what is pediculosis? It is infestation with lice and it affects millions of children all around the world, even the adults may be involved. And it's good that we have effective and safe treatment as well as preventive measures available. I hope many of you must have infected or sorry, infested with lice some, uh, sometime in your uh, childhood or even now in hostels, you're not taking a uh, bath regularly. So usually if we say that this is a disease of poor hygiene. Now there are three types, there are three varieties. Again, you must have seen only one type that is affecting the head. This is known as pediculus humanus variety capitis, capitis pertaining to the head. Then pediculus humanus variety corporis affecting the body. And then we have the pubic or the crab lice that is known as pyrus pubis. And each of these three types affects certain parts of the body and really moves to other regions. So each type is specific to its own domain and does not invade others like human beings. And how uh, do they act? They actually uh, attach to the skin and suck blood. And they may carry certain infections and transmit them from one person to another, like epidemic typhus, trench fever, and relapsing fever. So lice may be carriers of diseases like epidemic typhus, trench fever, and relapsing fever. <clears throat> And this is a typical adult 
mouse, which many of you must have seen. This is the pediculosis capitis, the head lies. Adult female is three to four millimeter long, and its lifespan is about 40 days, during which time it lays about 300 eggs, on an average eight to nine eggs daily, and adult male is slightly smaller. Pediculosis capitis principally in children, but it may affect adults as well. And after it attaches to the skin of the scalp and it starts sucking the blood, there may be intense itching, pruritus of the scalp. And if because of uh, scratching or because of poor hygiene, the skin is uh, torn off, there may be secondary infections in the form of impetigo or furunculosis. And uh, typically, uh, you, can, you must check in patients having this, these head lice, there is, uh, there are enlarged occipital lymph, occipital lymph nodes. So upon palpation, you can also confirm by the, the enlarged uh, occipital lymph nodes. You can also see nits. Nits are the small eggs of these lice, and these are seen uh, attached to the shafts of hair. And disease must be suspected in case of impetigo or furunculosis of the scalp and face in children. What are the clinical features the patient is going to present, usually their kids, or they are going to present with scalp pruritus. You can also look for any furunculosis, impetigo, any pustules, there may be, that is seen in case of secondary bacterial infection. And if there is severe infection with large amounts of pus being produced, that is going to uh, mat the hair together. This is a typical condition, this is known as plica colonica. This is matting of hair because of excessive pus production in case of secondary bacterial infection in the case of head lice that is caused by scalp pruritus. Here you can see nets, they are attached. So many nets can easily be seen in case of uh, head lice and they attach the shafts of hair. Then we have pediculosis pubis. These are also known as crabs or crab lice and these are present in adults chiefly and usually this is, these type of lice are limited to the genital region in hypogastrium and rarely they may also reach the axillae and sometimes can even be seen in the eyelashes. There may be slight discomfort or sometimes intolerable itching. And as the name suggests, it is uh, restricted to the gentle area. And again, in those with very poor hygiene and they may frequently coexist with other sexually transmitted diseases and you must uh, suspect HIV infection in these cases because rarely a patient gets so dirty or so decreased immunity that they get pediculosis pubis. It's a rare entity, just for your knowledge, right? Then pediculosis corporis. We discussed pediculosis capitis in which the lice are present on the scalp. Nits can be seen attached to the shafts of hair, but interestingly, pediculosis corporis, as the name suggests, it should be present on the body, isn't it? So where do you find these lice? These lice are not present on the body, but they can be seen in the seams of clothing, like beneath the belt or collar and even in the bed, but they're not actually present on the surface of the body. And you rarely see, uh, discover a parasite on the body, but still it obtains nourishment from the skin. Again, there is generalized itching, erysematous macules, urticarial wheels, excoriated papules, and even scratch marks may be seen. And very commonly, you can see secondary bacterial infections in these cases. Here you can see the scratch marks. You will not see the lice on the surface of the body because it is present in the clothes. So pediculosis corporis, the lice are present in the seams of the clothes and even on the bedding, but not, never on the body. But you will see signs of excoriation and empty uh, cases can be seen. And here you can see it is present in the 
lines of the clothing. You can see pruritus, uh, the patient is going to present with pruritus that is itching. There may be expiration marks upon examination or secondary bacterial infection. You can see different papules on the body. This is pediculosis corporis. This is about the pedicule, this crab blouse, that is the serous pubis. Even sometimes you can see the nets on the eyelashes. So how do you treat these patients? Our objective is to not only to destroy the adults, but also to reduce the hatch rate of eggs, reduce reinfestation, and whatever nets or eggs are present, they should be removed from the hair shaft. And uh, only the infected household members are treated for the lice, not all of the members, in case, like in case of scabies. In case of pediculosis pubis, the sexual contact should also be treated. And if there is involvement of eyelashes, we have to remove the nets only. So you can see from all these objectives that they can be uh, accomplished or achieved by in improving the hygiene, by taking bath frequently, by frequently combing the hair, changing the clothes and washing them again. So a good hygiene will uh, generally have in the general measures, we can say that the good hygiene is going to cure or um, these lies and we can meet many of our objectives by having good hygiene only. So it's a, uh, how do we treat these patients? It's bug busting. What is meant by bug busting? Very fine combs are used to remove the adults and the nets, and even there are electrical combs available that can actually kill the uh, mites, kill the lice while they are being removed. Otherwise you have to kill them manually or destroy them otherwise. Like you can see many of the mothers are having the kids in their naps in the between their legs and they're removing the nets and the adults. And you can also see the same case in case of monkeys that they're removing lice from the heads of the kids or even their other household members. So bug busting is the best way. You have to keep a very fine form to keep checking. If you get even single mite, you can remove it easily. Then we have certain chemicals available that we can apply on the scalp that are uh, melasion, carbaryl, lindane, phenoxrin, and even oral ivermectin can be given to patients of uh, pediculosis capitis, and it is said to remove or to kill the uh, lice as they suck the blood because the drug is present in the blood, it's neurotoxic. Otherwise, again, the drug of choice in this case is permethrin. In case of scalp or has pediculosis capitis, we use 1% permethrin. In case of scabies, we use 5% topical permethrin, which is applied to the surface of the scalp and leave it there for about two to three hours and then take a shower or uh, shampoo our hair to remove. And after that, we're going to again use a fine comb to remove the empty necks or the dead adders. And again, if there is any secondary infection, we can give core trimoxus for, for that. So any questions so far? Any questions for these two infestations or any questions? Good to see a large number of participants that are on 247. I'm impressed. Uh, book for Dharma, actually, uh, a few of the topics that are related, these are, can be studied from um, Davidson. Many of the topics are present in Davidson. <clears throat> and uh, I might inform you that in the next assessments of medicine, we're going to have a 10 marks test of dermatology as well for the lectures that we have covered so far. And the syllabus has been uh, shared with you. 
Uh, nits, they do not appear similar to dandruff. Actually, dandruff is white uh, flakes that may be small or large. In nits, they are, have a typical um, structure. Here you can see it's an empty neck egg case or nits that is attached to the shaft of hair. All right. Any other question? So be prepared for your dermatology part of medicine assessment as well. In case of scabies, as I told you, it has to be applied on day one and then repeated on day eight. So like if a person is applying it on Friday night, it's going to reapply it on the next Friday night as well. Also, same treatment for oral ivermectin. It will be taken start dose on one day and then repeat it on day eight. Yes, anybody else? So thank you very much. <clears throat> Allah Hafiz, and remember today is Friday. Do not forget the sunnah. That is take a bath. That is ghusl. Wear best clothes that you have because Friday is the best day after Eid. Then apply uh, good uh, uh, perfume in case of males, but should be avoided in case of females. Read Surah Kahaf, clip your nails, and of course, go for a Juma pair, which is obligatory for males, but females can also go uh, wherever the facility is available. And of course, with good. Uh, COVID SOPs. Drug of choice of pediculosis pubis, again, it will be for methrin, 1% topical, or we can go for ivermectin oral. Thank you, and assalamu alaikum.